Hi friends, it's Monica and let's tier list rank all the books I've read so far in 2023. I have not done a tier list ranking video in so long but I've had fun doing these in the past and I decided to tackle on like the mid-year check-in um, of my reading updates in this type of video format. Also with this tier list ranking, it appears like the book covers were all out of order so this is not the reading order that i actually had throughout the year i'm going to be explaining the rankings now so first up we have my faves these books are the ones that i absolutely love and they're i could categorize them as a favorite and then next we have amazing these books really blew my mind out of the water but they didn't quite make it into my favorites then we have the the good books that are decent that I would probably recommend to other people. Maybe there was like one or two things that I didn't particularly like that brought down my ranking for this book, but I would say overall it was a good enough read. Then at this rank at Missing Something, I just feel like maybe I just couldn't connect with the characters, I didn't like the writing style, maybe the pacing was off, so whatever books that go into here, they're missing like a major part that really diminished my reading experience. And then the last category we have is disappointments. Disappointments would be um, books that I really did not like or I really struggled to finish. You would find those books in this last category. So let's just jump into what I read in 2023. So here we have Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This was a reread and I think this was actually my first read of the year. So kudos to the Tier List Learning Gang for getting that right. And automatically it is going into my favorites because I read this a couple years ago but then it was a reread and I really loved getting back into the world of Roshar and getting to read all the events again and with all the characters i love them all and i'm just gonna bring oathbringer to my favorites as well for the stormlight archive series i would say it's such an easy adult fantasy series to invest in i would say it's worth the wait and worth your time to actually read these books and figure out what all the hype is about Next we have is Jade War by Fonda Lee. I'm also putting that up to my favorites because I would say Jade War was one of, I think it's my favorite book out of the trilogy, the Remote Saga. My reason for this was we get a lot more progression with our characters and we see how the intensity of running a clan in a urban fantasy setting. You have supernaturally gifted warriors also blended with guns, technology, and all of that. I really had a great time reading this book. The Foxglove King is a adult fantasy romance, although there is a huge complex world of politics, religious tensions. I would say this one was good enough for me. We are following Laura. She has death magic and she finds herself in a love triangle with a bodyguard and a prince. Okay, next up we have is the sequel to Spin the Dawn, which is Unravel the Dusk by Elizabeth Lim. Um, this one is a Mulan-inspired YA fantasy. It was really repetitive. I felt like it did have good things with the focus on the characters and not so much the romance. It just fell a little bit flat for me. So I'm saying it was missing that oomph factor. <laughs> then for Neon Gods, by Katie Robert. This is like a smutty adult romance, kind of like a modern Olympus. We're following Hades Persephone, although there is insta-love between our two main characters. I felt like the romance was well done, but it wasn't really the best thing, again, I ever read. <laughs> then we had The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rokshani Chaksi. This book was really interesting. We are following Indigo, who is a mysterious woman and we have a scholar who falls in love with her. This one really, again, fell flat for me. There wasn't a lot of substance. I really didn't like the dynamics between the married couple that we are introduced to. It's very toxic. I just remember Indigo being really unstable and toxic and manipulative. I didn't really like it. 
then we have Song of Silver Flame Like Night by Emilie Wenzel. Ultimately gonna put into Missing Something. This one is a, another YA fantasy. It's inspired by Chinese mythology. I remember this world, it was very in-depth. We also get a school setting, but then we transition out of the school setting into the real world. And I didn't really like the transition that was made. I felt that there was a lot of info dumping and you know that training montages that we get in like TV shows and movies? It felt like the school section was just a training, huge training montage and then it was just like placed the student into the world and it just felt rushed. Then we have Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. I really like this one. This one's about a woman that she needs to move to Boston to a, another firefighter station to help her ailing mother. There's a romance in the firehouse but with uh, firefighter culture it's a no-no to have workplace romances. I really liked it. It was, it was really heartfelt, really touching and Catherine Center has a way with words that really grips you. Then we have King of Scars. King of Scars, I would say it was good. Not my favorite installment in the Grishaverse series. Um, Libra Dugo, she does expand upon the world of what happened after the war in Raqqa. We're following mainly Nikolai, Zoya, and Nina in this. I really like Nikolai. He's one of my favorite characters, but I felt like there was too many competing storylines in this one. Then we have Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. In this one, we're following V and Levi, and they are both working at NASA, and on a newer engineering project, things go awry for V, but then Levi is there to help her out. I really like the relationship, it had a good build up, and it did follow the same formula as the love hypothesis, which I don't agree with. Then we have Crooked Kingdom, this was amazing. I love the found family in the Crooked Kingdom, Six of Crows universe. I love all the characters. I love the heist. Hmm. Actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to move Crooked Kingdom into my favorites because I do remember loving my first read of it so much and I read it as a reread in 2023. I remember the sequel made me cry, so it's putting it into my favorites. I think why I was like debating a little bit right here was I'm moving a little bit out of the YA fantasy genre, but I think the crows still have a special place in my heart. Then we have The Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. I would say this is good. This is a short novella about a world that you have these giant birds that hunt monsters down. It's a novella. It was very short and it was like a nice teaser of a larger world that I want to know a little bit more about. Then we have another novella that I really enjoyed. This is Dawn Chard by Brandon Sanderson. I'm going to put this into the amazing category. This is taking place between books three and four, so between Oathbringer and the Rhythm of War. In this one, we're following a disabled person, Risen. She is in a wheelchair and we learn how she is coping in a fantasy world with her new disability. And I really like Risen and her resiliency. It was really nice. Another novella was Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is a novella sequel to to Sorcery of Thorns. This one was like a really cozy, wintry, fun novella. Okay, and then Jade Legacy is the third and final book in the Green Boat Saga series. Like what I was saying before about Jade War, I really liked this series as a whole, although Jade Legacy, there's a lot of time jumps and that is why I'm putting it in the amazing category, not my favorites. I'm putting this one, Happy Place by Emily Henry, to amazing. I really like this one compared to her previous books that have been releasing in the past few years. There was Harry and Wynne who have been together forever but then they broke up but they still have to pretend to be together as a couple on their annual friend retreat. Seeing their relationship and to see how they got to the point of why they broke up, it was very endearing, it was very heartwarming to see them work through that. Next is The Seven Deaths of Evan Hardcastle. This one is a disappointment for me. I think mainly because, again, it's like with the time jumps in this one, this one we're following a man who is jumping bodies and replaying and reliving one night to try to prevent murder. We see him 
navigating through several different point of views at several different time points, it just felt really confusing to me to keep track of all the moving pieces. So I did feel a bit disappointed in that. Then we have A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins. This is a mystery book, murder mystery book. This one had a weird twist. That weird twist was just a little bit much for me. I like the mystery overall, how we're following three different women that have really close connections to the murder victim, but the end conclusion is just strange. <laughs> it didn't need to go that route, but it did, so <laughs> I'm leaving it there. Then we have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, and I chose the pretty white cover to show you guys. <laughs> so this one, I enjoyed it so much. It's a new favorite of mine from Brandon Sanderson. I don't think that's a huge surprise. The unique magic system with the breaths and like color spectrum. I really like the tale of the sister princesses. One of them is set to marry a god king at Ciri. Then the other sister, Viviana, her tales were on her journey of learning maybe a life of being a noble is not what she wants. From where they are at the beginning of the book, I would say at, by the end of the book, they end up trading places. It's really interesting to see how each character deals with the unfamiliar and situations that they were never prepared for. Then I have Our Darker Shade of Magic. This is a reread. This is series Shades of Magic by Avi Schwab. This first book, it was just a joy to read. This one is one of my favorites of all time, a fantasy series. It was one of my first forays into adult fantasy. I love the multiple world of London. Meeting all the characters again, Kel, Lila, Rye, and Holland, they were all great. Then we have The Aloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. This one I'm actually going to put into Amazing. This is the first book in the Second Era Mistborn series. Following 300 years after the event of the original trilogy, we have Wax and Wayne that are two main characters, but I would say Wax is the main protagonist. Are also set in a time where there is guns, there is more technology, and we're still following the same magical system from Alamancy. Then is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is um, the sequel to Ninth House. This was a long-awaited sequel. We're following Alex Stern. She is at Yale University and she oversees these magical rituals. And Alex is one of the few people in the world that can see and interact with ghosts. I really liked how Bent. It gave me the group of friends in like the supernatural TV show that are going on a hunt to hunt down demons. It was a really fun time. Then we have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is another contemporary romance. We're following a girl, Kala. She's really estranged from her father who lives in Alaska. But her father is sick from cancer and she goes to Alaska to visit him. And along the way, she meets a pilot, Jonah, that she might fall in love with. This one, I just felt Jonah was really rude to Kala in ways that was came up as condescending. This one, this romance is more so like rivals to lovers. Um, other than that, mm, wasn't too memorable. Okay, next we have is a Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This was amazing. I loved it. It's about a war college for dragon riders and we're following Violet and she's, I would say, physically limited with her height and she has like a bone sickness that highlights chronic illness in a fantasy world and I really like that. It was really well done. My favorite part was not the romance, it was the bond between the dragon rider and the dragons. Really curious to find out more about the dragon society because they're very elusive and overall I would say the hype around fourth wing is true. Next up is another romance contemporary book. Um, this one is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This was an amazing book. We're following Dr. Brianna Ortiz. She is looking for a kidney donor for her brother and her love interest is that kidney donor. And I really love the aspect of the medical doctor setting and their romance taking place. Also, really nice highlight of what it is for someone that has social anxiety to be in a relationship. All in all, I really did like yours truly. Very heartwarming. Then we have The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. 
really pains me to do this, but I'm putting into missing something. Um, this is a adult sci-fi fantasy book. Very unique world. There's magical users known as Origins. They have earth-shattering abilities. There's also talk of oppression of the Origins and how they are fighting back against the oppression. That part I really, really did love. It was just the writing style I couldn't get past. At first, I really enjoyed the second person point of view that we got in the first chapter. It just took me out of the story. I couldn't really connect with that character's point of view. I think it was missing a more accessible way for readers that don't pick up sci-fi and I'm one of those people. Going on to Hello Stranger by Catherine Center. This one is about a girl who is a starving artist until she is selected to be a finalist in a portrait competition. The thing that goes wrong for her is that she needs brain surgery and the surgery goes well except that she's then diagnosed with face blindness. Her brain is unable to recognize people's faces anymore. I found her a little bit too self-centered. She couldn't look past her current reality to truly be supportive of her friends, although she does have a good support system herself. Then we have Daughter of No Worlds. Mm, I'll say this was missing something for me. So in this story, we are following Tisana, who has been a slave ever since she was a child and she broke free. She then travels to a new land to find someone to help her learn about her magical ability under the tutelage of a reluctant mentor, Max, and their love story kicks off from there. It wasn't the romance that turned me off, it was like the narration. In the halfway point of the book, we do get a second point of view. I feel like it took me out of the book at times. Moving on to Shadows of Self by Brennan Sanderson. This is the sequel to um, A Lot of Law. Again, second error Miss Point series. And I would say I really enjoyed this one and my reasoning for this was that Everything was already established in book one, The Ailer of Law, then Shadows of Self took it to the next level where I was expecting it would. Brenda Sanderson did a great job at focusing on certain characters and their past hauntings, as well as building upon the strengths that each character has. Then we have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Loring. This one was actually a disappointment. We're following Olive, who considers herself the unlucky twin, but at the wedding reception of her twin sister, the entire wedding party gets food poisoning. There is a all expenses paid vacation to Hawaii that's up for grabs, so Olive, her main character, goes with the best man, Ethan, except they, they hate each other. So they're rivals to lovers, and that aspect I loved. But on the flip side, we do get a subplot with the twin sister, Amy, and her now husband Dane, which is also Ethan's brother. That storyline really turned me off for the entire book. Then we have Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. It was amazing. I really enjoyed Tress. She is on a planet that has four filled oceans. Tress, she is a girl who lives on an island and she falls in love with Charlie, the Duke's son. But when Charlie and his family goes off island, Tress quickly finds out that he is in danger and she may be the only one to save him. So the good aspects of the about this book was the sea fairy adventures that Tress has. She has incredible growth. The main thing I did not like about this book was that love story aspect. It just felt tossed in. It was like, okay. <laughs> okay, and then we have A Gathering of Shadows by uh, E. Schwab. This one was amazing. So my problem with the sequel is that it was second book slump. I didn't realize that when I first read it. This book is very slower paced than book one. Mainly reeling from the events of book one, especially for Kel. He is dealing with nightmares. Everyone just seems to have nightmares here and there, left and right. However, we do still see the continuing growth of our characters. Then we have the Saga series, volume 10. Good. The Saga series is a graphic novel series and it follows a small family with two parents from warring planets that have a child together and they are dealing with the entire universe coming after them because that's forbidden. And now volume 10 is really heartbreaking to see the after result of the ending of volume 9. I still love the characters and I'm really curious to see how this entire saga series will conclude. 
Then we have Babel by R.F. Kuang. In Babel, we're following Robin Swift, who has been adopted by a professor at Oxford. He is taught proficiency in languages. With Babel, I really didn't like the historical fiction aspect. I did not like was that the book itself did read like a textbook. There's a lot of footnotes. It was very slow moving. <laughs> However, I really love R.F. Kuang's take on POC characters in a time where they weren't treated well and she does a wonderful job at that. Next is A Fate of Wrath and Flame by Katie Tucker. I would say it was not memorable as a fantasy. In this book, we have parallel worlds to a fantasy world and we're following the protagonist who is a New York City grifter and she ends up in the body of a princess. I did like the whole jumping body thing in a parallel world, but some things about our main character didn't make sense. Like she was locked in a room at one point, but then she didn't really actually try to get out of the room. It didn't really make sense. <laughs> Then we have the sequel to These Hollow Vows, which is These Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan. I think this was missing something. It's a duology. So we're following this girl who then ends up in the Fae world in between the Unseelie and Seely courts, and she falls for two different Fae. I would say the outcome of the love triangle, like my love interest won, and that made me happy. Although I did think there was too much plot in this book that it felt rushed in some points. Overall, it was a really fun duology to read. Then we have Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. I'm putting into Good. This is ending off the Dark Artifices trilogy and we're following the children of um, other shadow hunters from another trilogy. I felt the ending for this one was really lackluster. It felt like this was a second book syndrome type of deal, but it's a conclusion in a trilogy. It should be more action-packed, and we did get action for this one and a satisfying conclusion, but the pathway to get there was a little bit too slow for my taste and liking. Last and not least, we have Bitter Medicine by Mia Sai. This one, I really enjoyed it. It's a debut novel. This is an urban fantasy that takes place in a multicultural magical world. I really like both of my characters. We have a Chinese immortal and she falls for a French elf. What worked for me in this romance was that it was healthy and had mature communication. It was also an already established relationship. So that's where I did take off some points here and there because I do like to see the beginnings of relationship and all that fun stuff. But overall, I would say this was a really good debut. It really showcased the author's talents. Okay, and this is my final rankings for all the books that I've read so far in 2023. This video took a lot longer to film than I first realized. It is because I have 39 books to talk about and I don't typically make videos with this many amount of books, but this is the final rankings. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts about all the books I've read and I would say some of the thoughts kind of changed here and there a bit, but I think overall that is what I do genuinely feel about these books. And of course, these opinions are my own. No hate on your favorite books if I did rank them lower than you may have expected. So no hard feelings there, but I really hope you did enjoy this video and I hope you can stick next time for my next one. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!